All right, I guess at this time we have a guest speaker, uh, Clint's away hunting, so, you know, he's out in the bush right now. Uh, but we have John, I don't know how many of you know him, uh, but he's spoken here before, I, I do know. So I'll just invite him up, and he'll probably more, he'll, you'll be able to internet, in, introduce yourself a little bit more. Okay. And, but yeah, okay. it's good to see you. Hello. Oh, there we are. I'm back. Wow. Hmm. Hey, what are we going to close with? Whatever. I can do that one. Yeah, if you want to. If you want to. I don't know. But if you don't want to, you can close it. Um. When I was pastoring, there was this guy who came to us at one of our pastor's retreat type things, and he said, whenever you use one of your kids as an illustration in your sermon, you have to okay it with them first, and then you have to pay them five bucks. So I don't want to use one of my kids as an illustration because of inflation. <laughs> but I was, I was thinking... And it just, you know, you're praying and you're thinking and then God gives you a thought or maybe it's your own thought, but I thought I'd share it with you. I think it was, well, certainly at least maybe 15 years ago, I had a good laugh because somebody that you know, that's not my kid who would be one of my nephews named Stephen, but I won't use his name, when they were in Sunday school at Thanksgiving, the teacher asked them, what are you thankful for? And he said, bacon. <laughs> and if you know Stephen, if he gets a good laugh, he can't stop, you know? So he said, and cheese. <laughs> and then he went on, but I won't go on. But that's not just the way it is. We are thankful for the things we can touch, feel, and fix. Yeah. So here we are, Thanksgiving. If I asked you what you were thankful for, we would have a wide range. My kids, my job, for my health, for my house. Let's play that stupid video that I that I gave you to put up. I'm so thankful. I think I'm more thankful than most people. Yep. Thankful for my car. I love my car. Yep. I'm thankful that they brought back Twinkies. Yep. Thankful that my phone reminds me of my kids' birthdays. Hashtag close call. Yep. You ever wonder what the Puritans did before they invented Kindles? Nope. <laughs> Probably play with dirt. Thankful I'm not a Puritan. Yep. Thankful for my gym membership. I mean, look at me. Yep. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful, I'm thankful for a God who, who loves me unconditionally. Yeah. I mean, even when I make a mess of things, he still loves me. Yeah. I know, seriously, I don't think about that enough. I'm really, really thankful for that. <laughs> I was gonna say all that stuff. I just didn't know we were talking about spiritual things. Yep. <laughs> you make me wanna be a better man.
There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that God gives me little reminders other than just because God's word says so. I know that should be good enough because I believe that. I'll put that back there where I can't play with it. But every so often he sends me a little reminder. Um, this week when we were having our first home group, I told them about a time that uh, the Gideons were coming to Red Lake, Ontario to send off New Testaments to the communities that still would let them do that. And it was celebrating their 50th anniversary of when they had gone up to Nungesser and all those places, if you know anything about Northwest Ontario. And they were going to come and just do a little presentation at the church because they were speaking at the Baptist church. And that was great. But all week, even before they came and asked if they could do that, I knew in my head that I wasn't preaching. But I still prepare because, you know, is that the pizza I ate last night or is that God telling me something? So I'm all prepared. And then they come on Saturday night just to make sure their PowerPoint's going to work and their little video thing's going to work. And, and they said, what time do you want me to come? And I said, well, I thought you were going to come right away because the Baptists, they start half an hour after us because we want to get out and get to the, buff the buffet before them. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, no, actually, we were supposed to speak there, but they have a missionary came into town and he had somebody they support for a long time, so he's going to be doing the preaching. And I said, well, then why don't you take the service? Why don't you do the preaching? Like, I mean, I'm ready, but... I've known all week. Somebody else is going to come with God's word. Oh, by the way, that's the only time that's ever happened to me. And so they came. And when they left, I already had the bulletin prepared. And I'm one of those crazy people who likes responsive reading. I think it's part of being ADD and I can't stay focused. So I have to, if I'm working with somebody, they read one verse, I read one verse as a congregation. And we got two things. But I had this scripture already in the bulletin, so I just left it, and I took the picture off the front, and I just went to Google Images, and I searched, and I found somebody's hand reaching and taking a Bible out of a drawer, obviously, in a hotel. And the guy comes, and he says to me right away, where do you get that picture? I said, well, I got it on the internet. And he said, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, we were getting to be kind of friends, so we'd talk to each other like that. And then we're going through the service after the service is over, and he says, how did you know what verses I was going to use? I said, well, those were the verses I was going to use. Like, he says, yeah, yeah, but really, where did you get the picture? Because he had the same picture on all of his PowerPoints. And I said, well, I, I went on Google Images, and... First one I liked, I saved it and put it on. He says, no, no, really, that is my hand taking a Bible out of a desk, out of a desk drawer at a hotel in Indonesia three months ago. I took it with my phone. How did you get the picture? God's in control all the time when we don't know it. So this morning, on Thursday, Virginia emailed me and said, what verse are you going to preach from? And I didn't respond because I was at work and then I forgot and I told you I'm ADD. You know, with ADD they say there's only two times, right now and not right now. So I didn't get back to her. So guess what verse she put in the bulletin? Psalm 100. One to five. Can't make this stuff up. I didn't see it until halfway, halfway through the service already. My verse is Psalm 100, verse one to five. Who's in control? It adds something to me. Because what I'm going to say later in this verse, later today that God promises to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. 
it means more because you know he's in charge. It's not like he wants to supply all your needs. It's who he is. And he is a God that can, not just says he will. He's in charge. Anyways, let's start by reading. It's in the front page of your bulletin. I'll read it from there because I don't know if she did NIV or English Standard or whatever, and I don't want to stumble all over. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. I didn't hear anybody. Can you read with me, please? Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are the sheep of his path. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Lord, would you please add a blessing to your word. And Lord, I pray that as I share from your word, that this stuff that's just John's idea just washes over people. But the truth that is from you sinks deep. And that your Holy Spirit will draw it up when we need to hear it the most. Lord, let us be like sponges when it comes to your words, your promises, who you are. In Christ's name, amen. I asked somebody once what their favorite cartoon was, you know, like in the Saturday mornings we used to have cartoons. Probably still, still do, but I don't see the paper. And he said, my favorite cartoon is Calvin and Hobbes. And his specific one was the one was just a one picture thing. And there's all these nails sticking out of the coffee table in different angles. And he's got a hammer in his hand and his mother's saying, what are you doing? And I knew I liked that guy right away because that was my favorite. But my second favorite one, and it's maybe not even funny, but it's something that I think of often. It's Peanuts and it's Charlie Brown and Lucy's all weirded out and it's raining like crazy. You got the lines coming down and she's saying, it's going to flood, the whole earth is going to flood. And Charlie Brown says, it will not flood the whole earth. God promised. He gave us a rainbow to remember his promise that it will never flood the whole earth again. Ever, ever, ever. God promised. And she says, oh, that, that's, that brings a lot of peace. And Charlie Brown said, and this is what I like about it, because only Schultz could get away with putting this in the paper. He said, good theologies like that, it gives you peace. What a thought. The more we know about God, the truth, the more peace we have. And so I got thinking about Thanksgiving, because it's Thanksgiving. Who knows that the easiest sermons to preach are the ones like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Who also knows that those are the hardest sermons to preach? Because you've all heard it before. You know what I'm going to say. Well, John's a little bit different cat. My mind goes places other people's doesn't. I got thinking a few things. We all know we're supposed to be more grateful and thankful. But we all kind of have a hard time remembering that when things get rough. And we also feel like when I say, when I do something special for my wife and say I love you, it's very powerful. She's easy to please. 
She really is. She just needs every so often be told. And sometimes shown. But when she says, I love you, and I say, I love you too, it's true, but it doesn't hold the same weight, does it? Well, shouldn't. See, I love you, Laurel. And she didn't say, I love you too. It wouldn't have held a lot of weight, though, if she did. <laughs> Compared to the other, oh, she's red, I love it. I am so big trouble right now. <laughs> Move along. Um, Thanksgiving is one of those times where we're supposed to be grateful and thankful and appreciate and, and focus on the goodness of God. And so it feels like it's not as important because it's not as genuine. It's like saying I love you too. As opposed to in the moment really feeling grateful for what God's done. So I thought why don't we do this? Is it because we're supposed to? Is it because we're all kind of a little rebellious? Or is that just me who sticks his heels in and says, you can't make me? I don't know. So I got thinking, why don't we? I didn't have good answers, and I can't preach that anyways. So I couldn't find scripture verses to say it. But it's kind of made me think, why am I not more grateful? You know, if I was thinking of somebody else, I would say because they have this entitlement complex and they think they should get everything anyways and they don't appreciate the stuff that God's done for them. I don't know. But I wouldn't say it about me. And I moved along quickly from there. And the next place I went to was maybe it's because we think that we've earned the stuff we have and we don't remember that it's God who gave us the ability, the opportunity, the strength, the wisdom. And sometimes just out of his kindness, he gives it to us. And we don't remember that we didn't really earn it. And yeah, we earned it. Do you think that the average person now works harder than the people worked 200 years ago? or not as hard. The stuff we have now compared to them, that's God. That you were born now, in this century, in this place, instead of in a third world country where you could work so hard and not barely scrape by. Maybe that keeps us from being grateful. Because we forget that every good and perfect gift comes down from our Father of Heavenly Lights. That's scripture. That's not John's thoughts. Every good and perfect gift. Your kids. Your health. The very fact that he put breath in your lungs and continues to do it, that comes from God. Yes, we can cooperate, we can be in better shape, we can be the guy who's actually doing the chin-ups instead of the one that's... But, really, we all know somebody who is in perfect shape as far as we can see. They try, they eat the right things, they this, and they get so sick. Only God. So I thought I'd read a few verses about what God does for us. Every good and perfect gift is from above. How about this one from Philippians? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. All your needs. Do I want all my wants? Or is all my needs good enough? Well, God certainly didn't have to put the right verses for me in the bulletin to remind me, did he? And he doesn't have to do all kinds of stuff that he does for me. But he promises all my needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that the second most memorized verse in the Bible? How often do we think, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want? If I ask the average person, 
what they need right now, they could come up with a list. Easier than they can come up with the things they're thankful for. It's weird, eh? Christians are a little bit strange cats. They actually are more grateful. I, I read a survey that was saying the most appreciative people in the world were Christians. And one of the measuring things they had for whether they said how thankful or how grateful somebody is, is how much they share. And they said that, and I don't know if it's true or not, maybe it's just the country they did this study in, but they said 75% of charitable donations come from Christians. Well, that sounds like a, how could you ever prove that? I don't know. But I do know that Christians are the most generous people I know. Not just to charitable donations, but to each other. And if you were thinking, what says whether you're thankful or not, it's if you're open-handed. Because if God's the one that gave you this stuff and everything you own belongs to him, you can let it go. <laughs> I remember one time I was actually preaching about that and somebody said to me, yeah, you share everything you own except for, uh, I don't even know if I should say this, he said, you don't share your wife, your outboard, or your chainsaw. <laughs> I said, well, one out of three. If God gave you the chainsaw, so what if they doesn't come back working right? I bet you none of you have had a chainsaw where you lent it out and they put real gas in it instead of mixed gas and it came back. I have. And then it wasn't that much after that, I got this great chainsaw that's so much better than one that I had, and I paid like $50 for it. I would have traded it, the old one in 50 bucks any day, because God is my provider. I wouldn't have even been looking for that other one if it wasn't being for everything I own. I mean, everything belongs to God. Why don't we let people use our campers? Why don't we? It's because that's not normal. But that's what Christians do, right? It's just saying. It's one of the ways of showing whether you're grateful and thankful or not, not just saying thanks. How about this? God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Hold on a second. He shifted halfway through the verse. I, I like it that, like if I told you I would give you a million dollars, you would smile and say thank you, knowing I couldn't write a check for a million dollars. <laughs> It would bounce all the way from here back to your bank. Cost you $50 for putting it in an NSF check. <laughs> but God can, not only did he will, like the verses we read, he can. He's in control. He's controlled everything. So, but it changes from he can do this, and he can give you everything, and, and all these, so that you will abound in good works. Not so you'll have all this stuff. Interesting. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer for the reason, for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. There's a... I read a story about this missionary, and I, I saw it two different places, and it's on the internet, so it's got to be true. Anyways, the guy's retired. He's, he's dead now, but he was a missionary in India, and he had been a doctor before he became a missionary, and the area in India that he was at, they had this problem, it's like an epidemic with this infection that people would lose their sight. 
And it was this, he discovered a, a simple way to use this antibiotic that was used for other things that would cure the infection that would cause people to go blind. And so he would go from place to place and have all kinds of antibiotics and people would get their sight back if they weren't completely blind and it would heal in there. And it was like a miracle. And he said that in the area he was in, the dialect that they used didn't have a word for thank you. So what they would say after they received their sight back was, I will tell of your name. Hmm. Thank you kind of hollow compared to not only do I appreciate what God does for me, not only do I acknowledge that it's him who does it, not me, I tell of his name. I share in his glory, to use a Bible verse. I expand his glory by sharing with other people what he does, which ties me back to always being ready to give an answer for the hope that I have within you. If Pastor Clint had classes on evangelism, not all of us would want to go because, I don't know, maybe I'm a little intimidated to be able to go and share the gospel with people. I don't know, would you go? But if we know that all that we're really doing is sharing why we have hope, why we have joy, why we're grateful, why we're thankful, and not giving the answer that they expect, because look, I'm so glad I have a gym membership, don't look at me. It's because I have a hope that even when things don't look right, that my Father in heaven says, I will one day wipe away every tear. I will restore. When I would go to nursing homes, for a little while I was a chaplain in a nursing home, and it's like I would say to them, he will wipe away every tear. He'll restore all of our poor memories. He will do away with wheelchairs. He will do away with people living so far away that we love that can't come and see you. He will, because these are the things that were the pain, right? He will fix it all. That gives me hope. I want to close with this. And this is maybe where I said, you know, if these thoughts come from John, just let it go. And I even prayed that God would let it wash over. So this might be one of those. Because John's going to take two ideas, put them together, and any great Bible theologian and any great biblical theologian would say, John, you're stretching it. But I don't think I am. You decide for yourself, okay? The Bible says over and over, God is love. Some verses just almost second shortest verse in the Bible, God is love. That's nice, but I wanted to tie that to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, which I'll bet of the people that are married here, more than 80% of them had read at their wedding, if you remember the wedding. If you're like the guy, it's like, I'm getting the bride. I don't care what they do or say there. But most women would know this, if it was read. And I want to take where it says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, and I want to substitute a word in there. Because if God is love, I think I can safely, without stretching it, say, God is patient. Well, if love is patient and he's love, God is kind. I want to read through those four verses, five verses, four to eight, yeah, five verses. And I want you to think about why we're 
thankful that God does these things. And it's not only because he provides this stuff. It's because who he is. With our home groups that we're starting, they started some of them, they're going to be looking at who God is. And they are not going to be saying he's all-powerful, all-knowing, all this, all that. They're going to say he is merciful. He is forgiving. He is kind. He is. And in Sunday school, the classes I sat in on one last week, guess what they're doing? They're saying, what does God's word say who God is? And they're starting with, of his patient. Well, God is patient. Very, very special. So I thought we'd share that today and close with that. God is patient. God is kind. He does not envy, and he does not boast. And he's not a proud God. He does not dishonor, dishonor others. God is not self-seeking. And he's not easily angered. And he doesn't keep a record of all your wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. God always protects. He always trusts, he always hopes, and he always perseveres. God never fails. Lord, I thank you that you are really, really in control, not just in some abstract way, that you're involved in each of our lives. Lord, I thank you for your patience with me. And I praise you for your kindness. And Lord, I am so glad that you've taken my transgressions and thrown them as far away as the east is from the west, that you don't keep a record of what I've done wrong. Lord, for that I am truly grateful. For that I am truly thankful. In Christ's name, amen. My challenge to you this week is to not just say with words how grateful you are or thankful you are, but to tell of God's name as a response to being grateful for all he's done for you. If I could ask the musicians to come back and sing. When they're coming, I'll tell you something else God did for me this week that he didn't have to. Both my parents are kind of getting there. My, my mom's losing it. My dad's, I'm shocked he's still alive. I thought a month and a half ago when I went back to Winnipeg, it would be to say goodbye, and he's still, he's not eating, and it's a month and a half later. And they sent him home to die, and he's still, but my sister sent me a little video of my dad singing. And it was, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And my dad can be a really difficult patient, but his countenance comes back when he sang that song. And then I phoned my mom just hours after that, and she said, I sing this song every night so I don't forget, because I'm forgetting everything, and I don't want to forget this. And she sang some of the words wrong, even. But guess what song she sang for me? I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. That's a little present God gave me. I would encourage you to watch for those presents and don't think they're by coincidence or by accident. The one who loves you 
He gives you those things, but keep your eyes open so you don't miss them, okay? Let's praise God.